how do you guys do sheet metal stuff? No. Do you guys do any sheet metal? Not much. Sheet metal? No. No. You guys do sheet metal? Yeah. A little bit. No. All right. Um, so I've done a lot of sheet metal before, uh, and so we'll go over how SolidWorks does to make sheet metal and the different options you have for different things, um, and how it's different than if you're doing a standard model, and also two different ways to do it. Um, you can either go in and create a model just like normal, so you can just you draw, you draw a box and you shell it out, and then you can tell it to turn it in and then you can add, extrude other things and then tell it to turn that into sheet metal, or you can start and build it from face by face as a sheet metal part. And that's usually the, the better way to go because then you can do some other things like welding corners that you can't do if you turn it into sheet metal later. Um, so we're kind of going to start off with, I'll do it the first way. Or just do a box like that. <clears throat> and so we'll just do it like that. Um, maybe do it one by one by one, just to get some basic shape. Um, <clears throat> and then I'll turn it into sheet metal so you can see kind of how that works. Sheet metal would we'll start with a base tab or base flange or tab. Um, what we're going to do this first time is we're going to make it and then we're going to use the convert to sheet metal to convert it into a sheet metal part and add all the bins and everything. So I'm going to just go back here, extrude. Let's do 16 gauge. You want to know how thick that is? 16 gauge is 0 0.059. We'll just put that in and it will accept it. <clears throat> and so you, when you're doing the sheet metal, when you go to convert it, you want to make sure that everything is consistent or else it won't work. Um, so I have that now. So let's say that was my part. I've got some holes in here, whatever. Um, So now, in this first thing up here, this is my sheet metal gauges. So I can go here and tell it what gauge to be, if, if I want to use that. Um, or I can just have it go by whatever my thickness is of, of my material. Um, so if I do gauge table, and I come down here and pick this bottom one, the sample table steel. And now I can go down here and pick which gauge I want. So I want 16 gauge. So it knows the exact thickness for that. Also, this one is, this table is based on uh, bending steel with air bending, so they're not body made out on the die. <clears throat> and so you can custom make these tables or get them from, from places. Um, and the table is kind of a starting point, depending on the machines and the dies that you're using it 
the values might be different. Um, <clears throat> this right here is your bend radius. So what, what radius are you bending with? Um, so it's recommending a 0.08, but I could override it and say that, no, I want to do a 16th inch radius on the inside. Um, so I could override it with that. This box here, this is my base. So this is the part that's going to stay still, and everything else is going to bend around it. So I'm going to pick this as that plane there. And now it jumps down to my bent edges. So these are the edges that are actually going to be the bends on how it folds. So I need to pick edges that are on that face. So pick there. You can see it added to the bend end. There. And as I'm doing that, it's adding these purple edges, which are my rip edges. That's where it's going to make gaps to, to unfold it. Down here is how I want the corners to close, <clears throat> the gaps between them. If I want to, um, you guys can kind of see from. Here. That one's not really pretty much, but if I go here, it'll extend it out. That's going back down. So on that one, it doesn't really do anything about these. So I can really close up that gap right here. So now it's a real fine gap, so you don't have to weld very much. <coughs> For the, the, the gap down here at the bottom, if you want a rectangular, op round, or just a tear. So the tear is just gonna, it's gonna have start right at the bend line. So it's not going to have any extra space to, for, for the allowance. The K factor, that is um, when, you, when it bends, how much it's going to stretch is the K factor. And so that's all, starting with, with 0.5 is, is good. And then if you're going to be doing production, you'd want to go out and, and have it tested on your machines with this material and your dies. And then you kind of figure out what the real number is, and then you just you keep that one and you save, and you always use that number. Um, so it depends on your dies, uh, your upper dies, your lower dies, um, <clears throat> and then the material thickness, that might vary some. Uh, so that's something you kind of want to experiment with to, to get it dialed in, so that way you know that your K-factor is good for your equipment, um, so that you don't have to worry about it. Then I'll say OK. And here's my box. So I hit pin flatten, and it's going to unfold it. So that's the way to do it if you've got a shape that's already done. You tell it, this is my flat piece, and I'll undo it, and it'll figure it out. And I can just refold it and go from there. And then from here we can use these options. So we can do edge flanges, which is how you do it when you start from scratch. So I can pick on an edge and then tell it where to go. And then I can adjust that flange from here. But we'll start another one from scratch to do that. Um, corners. So we'll get all, we'll get to the rest of these in a minute. So I'm just going to close that. Any questions on this? So let's, I'll let, I'll let you guys do that first. Just make one draw box. Okay. Shell it. It's a uh, yep. folding thing. The box going down this way. Punch, punch it down. Uh, but it's meant to be used like on a V die, but mm -hmm. if you're doing a forming press, it, it would work also. Okay. Yeah, just. If you unfold it, 
you can see that the bend line yeah. is halfway between the notch. And so that, that's that's the middle of your radius. So it's meant that if you're going to be doing a V die okay. uh, to bend it. Because if you're going to do like um, like a finger die and, and fold it over, you'd have to adjust that a little bit to, to adjust for how, how the bend happens. Because on a, a finger die, you'd actually hold it by here and let it bend around. So but this is meant for like a V die. It's going to come down right on it. On the middle. Yeah. Okay, so if you're going to use some kind of a a, a punch, uh, a, a two-part die yeah. to actually shape it, you'd want to test it to see what the parameters of, of that were.